Well, I'm Marina Joshi. Welcome to the program. State flags have been lowered in Moscow as the city mourns 35 victims of Monday's terrorist attack at Russia's busiest airport. People are flocking to the site of the blast to lay flowers and pay tribute to those who lost their lives at Demodiedovo. The explosion was Russia's worst terrorist atrocity since twin bombings rocked Moscow's metro last March. We can now cross live to our correspondent Irina Galushka, who is outside the airport for us today. Irina is definitely the whole nation is grieving for the victims, even though the official day of mourning was declared only in Moscow and uh, the Moscow region, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Well, it's in times like this when usually a country or a nation comes together. And though Russia is a multinational, multi-confessional country, there being their church services being uh, held in various churches and synagogues and mosques all across the country, and of course, especially in Moscow and here at Damodedova, there will also be a commemorative service uh, that's going to be held at, at the church that is located on the premises of the airport and in the chapel that's inside the airport as well. Of course, uh, people are also flocking to this scene to pay respects. They're laying flowers and wreaths uh, as close to the site of, the, of Monday's bombing as possible. Now, you have to remember that that area has been cordoned off on Monday and still hasn't been reopened. Only people arriving there can uh, access it. Other than that, everybody has to stay in the main building, just in the departures area. But still, flowers and candles are being lit. It's a very emotional scene there right now, I have to say. It's not just... Uh, passengers who are departing who are leaving flowers or those who are coming to greet those who are arriving that are also paying respects it's passers-by it's workers of the airport it's uh, it's flight attendants from various airlines they're all coming here some of them are standing there uh, some of them are maybe saying prayers it's very very emotional at the airport at the moment and among those who came to pay their respects today was an ambassador was American ambassador John Byerly uh, who said that although some Western media have been saying that Russians seem to be cold-hearted and rigid in the aftermath of the tragedy, he believes that they're doing just the right thing. These flowers are just my expression on behalf of the American people of our solidarity with the Russian people today, the day of national mourning. We're grieving together with the families that lost their loved ones. And we're expressing our solidarity with the Russian people and the Russian government that there can be no refuge for monsters who are capable of carrying out an attack like this against us. He also added that people uh John Barley also added that uh, to, in order for uh, for everybody to show that the best way to fight terrorism is in fact to show that life goes on and uh, to continue living. And also, of course, as far as the official commemorations are concerned, most of the official events in Moscow and in Russia were started with a moment of silence. And uh, uh, television and radio scheduling has also been changed. There are no entertainment programs and all commercials have been cut down to a minimum. Well, Irina, you were at the airport shortly after the attack, so uh, could you talk us through what happened there on Monday? Of course, uh, the blast happened at 4.32 p.m. in the arrival section of the airport, just past the customs area. At that point, nearly 30 flights were arriving, so you can understand that this is something that was probably being planned ahead. They knew that this, the terrorists, however many of them were there, uh, knew that a lot of flights were coming in at that particular moment and into Moscow's, Russia's, as a matter of fact, busiest airport. Uh, when we got here, at that point, the situation was more or less under control. There was no panic. There was no emergency going on, but there was a very heavy security presence. There were Secret Service representatives, uh, police officers, sniffer dogs. All of them were here making sure that there were no other explosives in the building. And my colleague Sarah Firth has the details of what transpired afterwards. The harrowing scenes from the moment the blast hit. For those who witnessed the attack, it's a memory that won't fade fast. People came running out of the terminal building, quite clearly distressed, with blood, and you know, obviously you know, injured. The blast hit at peak time as around 30 flights were due to land. The bomb, it seems, time to cause maximum devastation. 
it kind of dawned on you that it, that it had happened and that something really quite serious and just how close we've come really kind of sort of the stark realisation you sort of wake up and go God, that really was very close. There was a two-minute window that literally, if we'd been hadn't got our bags on time, if we'd been delayed going through immigration, there was a two-minute window that we would have been in the terminal building. Yet less than 24 hours later, and the airport is again fully operational. It's a resilience that many people feel is a commendable trait of the Russian people. The can-do, get-on-with attitude is, is exactly the sort of attitude that you need to adopt in a situation like this. As many people are now left fighting for their lives in hospitals around Moscow, people have rallied, donating blood and ensuring the victims and their families receive all the help they need. I got to the airport. I was waiting for someone. Then there was an explosion. There was a lot of people. I couldn't see the bomber. My friend helped out. There was a lot of smoke. I went to the airport with my mother-in-law to meet our relative, but then the bomb went off, and after some confusion I eventually found my relative, but I still don't know what happened to my mother-in-law. President Medvedev vowed in no uncertain terms that those responsible will be held accountable. As investigators now work to establish exactly who is behind the attack, the finger of blame has also fallen on the airport and transport authorities. As you can imagine, security measures at Domodedovo have now been stepped up. These metal detectors weren't always mandatory, now they are, and there are serious questions being asked as to why these extra measures weren't being implemented sooner. Punishments for what the president has called severe security breaches could be just around the corner. But some feel that when it comes to terrorism, the main weapon is the refusal to be intimidated. The airport operations may have returned to normal, but here people come to lay tribute, an act of remembrance and a mark of respect for those who lost their lives in the attack. Sarah Firth, RT, Moscow. Well, Irina, has there been more reaction from the Kremlin today over this attack? Well, yes, that's right, absolutely. As a matter of fact, nearly just moments ago, you can say, President Mitya Medvedev has announced that he has fired the head of the transport division of the Ministry of Interior. And he also added that, that firings will continue. He's really serious. He's got his mindset on making sure that nothing like this will happen again. There is a program, a, security, a transport security program that has been implemented, that was supposed to be implemented uh, in 2007. It has been worked out, but it hasn't been working properly. So Russia president said that he is hoping that the heads of the police and everybody else involved with uh, transport security is going to start acting on that program immediately, as soon as possible, and not just at the airports, but everywhere where transport is concerned, and of course not just in the Russian capital, but all around the country. There also has been information from the member of the security uh, committee of the Federation Council who said that, as a matter of fact, a federal security service knew about the terror attacks that were being prepared and in fact has been acting on them and a, a, most of most of the groups who were planning uh, terrorist attacks in Moscow have been apprehended early or earlier or rather later uh, earlier uh, this year and for, unfortunately not all of them could have been prevented like the terrorist act which happened here at the Domodedovo airport on Monday so no security services are not to blame and the firings in the transport department will continue and we should probably we expect some ramifications for the Domodedovo authorities as well, who insist, by the way, that they are not responsible for the security breaches which may have been in place, which led to the horrible, uh, tragic terrorist act here on Monday afternoon. All right, Irina, thanks very much indeed for this update. Irina Galushko there from the Domodedovo airport. And the international community has collectively condemned the terror.